landscape architecture for me is all about the, the designing, the planning and design and the management of human ecosystem. And I call myself Dirty Man, to landscape. Dirty Man means the dirty, the earth man. So to landscape is made of two characters, earth man. Uh, the Lulu Pumpkin become a landscape architect. I was a peasant son, born in 1963 uh, in a small village called Dongyu, which means East Yu. The village named after my family name, Yu. The village was fairly small, only 500 residents altogether at that time, 1960s. It was at the place where the big river called the Wujiang River, Jinghua City, Wujiang River, and the, the white sand creek flowing from the mountain. So the, it is at the intersection when these two waterways meet. I was assigned a task of taking care of a buffalo. So taking care of a buffalo morning and late afternoon, you have to lead the buffalo to go to the creek. Sometimes I ride on the buffalo. I, it, the buffalo took me, go through the willows, uh, eating the grass, uh, and it's really, you know, seeing the, you, you can hear the birds singing, the creek bubbling. So that's during the summertime. That, during the normal days, during the dry season, but during the wet season, the creek flood. This make me understand how you can actually slow down a very, very steep river, a steep creek, creating so many low waves. You slow down the, the water and, and use it, make use of it. Meanwhile, you didn't disrupt the natural process and even the flood. You don't want to stop the flood, actually. So I remember whenever the monsoon season comes, the whole village will get excited because we know the fish will swim from the big river, which is the Wujiang River, upstream, and they flip over, they jump over the lower, the low waves, and they go to the pond, go to the rice paddies, go to the wetland. So that's the time the villagers, all the villagers go to the field to catch the cow, catch the big fish. Now that's exciting for me. And how can you slow down the water instead of speed up? You slow down the water and use the water and make it living, make friends with the water. I remember 1972. In the summer, the first time the villagers use pesticide, DDT, and that immediately kill all the fish overnight. Before that, the villagers have no, no pesticide, no chemicals. And because that was when China built up the relationship with the US, Nixon visited China. That year, Chinese government wanted uh, cheap chemicals, particularly cheap fertilizer and cheap pesticide. So we imported a lot of these chemicals. And I remember that day, in the noon, at noon, the, the whole river covered with white fish, all dead. And we don't know that it's poisonous. So the villagers even, cut, even get this uh, killed fish, dead fish, to cook. Now that's the first signal of industrial revolution in my village. So I remember when I was 10 years old, I fell into the current, and I thought I would be drowned. But luckily enough, so the creek was all distributed with willows. You know, the so, so, so water is always mixed with grooves of willows, with shrubs, with reeds. 
and this vegetation actually slow down the current. So I, I, I grab this uh, vegetation, I grab the willow, and eventually get saved myself. I survive this flood. Now this makes me feel that water or, or river should go together with green. The blue and the green should go together. Create a resilient, create a, a, a spongy-like river bank. So that not only slow down the water, but also save lives. This teach me how the real river should look like. So that makes me understand, it's as Chinese saying that water is treasure. You should retain water from all directions. Water is treasures. That's one of my loot for my concept of sponge city. Slow down water, retain water, recycle water, make the landscape porous. And afterwards, in 1980s, another revolution happened. We wanted to create a mechanical, modernized landscape. So uh, all the common members were sent to the field to dug, to create channels, replacing those early irrigation system. Originally, the irrigation system is following the contour because it, it is a basin. So the topography is very, you know, it, it's not just totally flat, but it's, it's a kind of rolling, uh, uh, shallow, uh, uh, very, very diverse uh, topograph, very subtle change. But in order for the, to the topo for agriculture, the farmers create terraces leveling the ground, but a small pieces, not so huge, not so big, but big enough for men to work in these fields and big enough to use cow, use buffalo to till the, the, the ground. So all the irrigation system, which diverted from the weir, following the contour, they use gravity to educate the rice paddies. So eventually, all the rice paddy, any single piece of field, can be irrigated by gravity. Now that's why the, the irrigation, the, the ditch, the earth ditch, meanders along these uh, uh, rice paddy fields. But suddenly, all these fields being replaced with the street lines, with grid, you know, and uh, and that creates problem for irrigation because some fields is way too high or some are way too low to get irrigated. And so all the pond system get disconnected and become useless because we use this mechanical irrigation system. So pond, so the pond disappear, the meandering irrigation waterway disappear, the patches of native forest or native grove disappear, and the following is that so there's a loose of the disappear of frogs and the birds. And certainly the beauty of our farm. And the following is that the pond in the village also disappear. So it's a social place. Not only is a natural, not only is a water source, but also the social place gets dis disappeared. The destruction of my own paradise is what makes me think that we need a revolution. Because there are thousands or millions of villages like that in China and in the world suffering the same problem. And we need a revolution to save that, to recover, to recreate. It's in Chinese term, the land of peach blossom, or in other words, paradise, Shangri-La. Uh, that's really a nature-based, harmonious living. The man should live with nature, should depend on nature, adapt to nature, and has a harmonious relationship with nature. And the key for me is, is water. How you manage water, how you treat water, how you, how you make use of water is a key to recreate this 
kind of land of peach blossoms. To retain water, to slow down water, and to recycle water. So from sponge city to sponge planet, it needs all science and art. We're not going to just do it, you know, because you need the scientific background to understand how can you transform the global surface into a sustainable planet. So with ambition to, to recover my own village or my own paradise in mind, in my dream, in my childhood, I decided to go to Harvard to build my capacity. I'm lucky, I'm exactly at this window when China opened the door to have exchange with the US. So as a farmer's son, as a peasant's son, I come out of this little village, you know, 20 kilometers in, in diameter, in that world. Uh, immediately opened the window, it like, it's just like for me. And I went back to China at the time when the urbanization picked up, the speed just sky scrapped in 1997, and be able to establish first a private practice in China landscape architecture. Meanwhile, I established a school at Beijing University. Now that, I think, I'm the luckiest person in this field, being able to create so many projects and to, to, to achieve what I want to do, the ecological utopia.